I'm Dan Hines. I'm running for uh, the BC Green Party. I'm a candidate in Kamloops North Thompson. I'm also the forestry spokesperson for the party as well. Uh, my family often comes up when I got talking about why it is that I'm running and what's, why I'm passionate about what's going on in politics or in the community. Uh, I am born and raised here in Kamloops. My family's a ranching family, sheep ranchers from up at Pinnantown Lake with my grandpa Roy moved out here in the 30s. Uh, my dad was a logger in the community as well as a rancher. Uh, my mom was a community care nurse and my grandparents were ranchers as well as uh, my, my grandpa on my mom's side was a game warden here in Kamloops. So we've got deep roots in this community and it kind of combines for me between um, care for the land, which really comes from my dad's side of the family, and uh, community service and caring for one another, which really comes through my mom's side of the family. And so the, both those things kind of combine for me and why it is that I'm showing up uh, at this time in my life as a candidate and as a Green Party uh, candidate for this riding. Uh, my career background is pretty diverse. I have been uh, a variety of things. One of the uh, things I've, I've done for a number of years now is I'm an Anglican priest and I've traveled throughout the diocese, uh, which goes up as far as Prince George over Lillooet. So I got a good sense of the small towns. They've been a circuit rider or what they call a regional vicar in Anglican terminology. Uh, so it's been placing me in small towns, small communities, um, and small congregations. So I've done that. I was a, a manager at the wildlife park uh, here in Kamloops for about nine years, doing project developments and doing fundraising work with the, with the wildlife park uh, facilities, uh, work out there as well. Uh, I've been a contractor, I've worked in this community as uh, um, doing all sorts of different aspects of the construction trade. And my background is I have a couple degrees in theology and I've done my, some of my schooling down in the U.S. Uh, down in Kentucky is where I did some of my schooling. Uh, favorite restaurant, it depends what mood I'm in, right? So this is always a tough one for me. Uh, one of my favorite restaurants for sure is Kila's. I like the Mexican food, kind of Salvadoran food. Uh, they're downtown on Victoria Street. I like that place. And I like Peter's Pasta as well if we just want sort of more comfort food. That's a kind of good sta family standby for us. So the top priority uh, for me when I think about Kamloops and I think about the North Thompson, uh, I think about job security, about the economy. Uh, I think the top priority is a vibrant, vital community where people can make a livelihood and can do well um, in this community for, for jobs and what jobs provide for us. So, uh, but that's always in balance for me with, um, with a very vibrant education system, with good health care. Um, so it's always hard to kind of isolate one priority out, but if I had to say that sort of the, the area that I really want to make sure that we're focused on, it's, the, it's this question of how, um, how resilient is the community when it comes to providing uh, good, solid jobs for, for everyone in the community. Yeah, this question of why students would be interested in voting Green, I think one of the main reasons is that the Green Party and the whole Green movement globally is really about the future. And I think for students um, looking at decades of work, decades of life, uh, we're really the party that's talking the most about uh, what is happening um, ecologically to the planet um, and, and even right down to the very local level what's happening in our communities around the environment. Uh, so that's one reason. I think the other one is though that we're also the only party that's not receiving corporate and union donations to fund our campaign. And that makes us then uh, more, uh, will, more able and more capable of really listening to what students are needing um, and, and more responsive to, to the students' needs uh, and to other people in the community as well. Maybe they don't get their voice heard because they're not giving the kind of corporate and union money to political parties uh, that uh, makes it really difficult for them to get their voices heard in this, in this political situation. Uh, my favorite movie, oh, it's hard to pick a favorite movie, but I, one movie I really like a lot is one that's not very popular and I find most people haven't seen it, which is called The, the Razor's Edge. And it was with Bill Murray and it was, it was a deal he worked out with Columbia Pictures. Um, 
they required that he do Ghostbusters, which he didn't want to film, and so he agreed to do that if they filmed the movie he wanted to film, which is this wonderful uh, kind of rambling story about a young man who's trying to um, survive the First World War and then has to find his way to himself again. Uh, it's, just a coming, it's a coming into your own kind of movie and a uh, very deeply spiritual film. I, I, think, I think Razor's Edge is a wonderful film. It's based on a novel. Well, I think the, the big, big one right now that a lot of us are aware of is healthcare, about the shortage of doctors in the community. So I think when we talk about uh, provincial government, we're really focusing on healthcare. Um, but I think we're also talking about the the funding and support for our schools and education. So I, I would have a hard time separating those or, or saying one is more important than the other. Those are both key factors. And then getting back to what I said earlier about uh, being able to provide the kind of environment that makes it um, a, a prosperous, um, a growing, developing uh, kind of economy. And I think provincial governments have a lot to uh, offer as far as the kind of incentives that make that possible or the type of legislation that creates an atmosphere where that's possible. So when it comes to post-secondary education, I think uh, what's first and foremost in most of our thinking is about cost. Um, cost for tuition. Um, that's right up there and how we address the rising uh, cost of tuition, the kind of creative response to it. Um, I know as Greens we're talking about one area of, of really deep creativity is about a basic income. So the idea being that our guaranteed income, the idea being that, that there's, um, there's a need for us to, to look at maybe a different way of providing a broad kind of public support and uh, students would be included in that. So that's just one pilot project that we're looking at uh, as part of our platform for this election coming up in May. Um, I think the other one though is about the type of skills, uh, type of responsiveness to the new economy, it's particularly around what the jobs are going to be looking like decades from now and trying to get ahead of that, trying to be responsive to that. So I think there's a lot of work we can do about not basically educating for the past, but educating for the future. So when I get out of town visitors, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on what they like to do, I like to do things outdoors. So I usually take them for hiking. I like to go up to Sun Peaks for sure if they're skiers or they're uh, hikers. But um, up to Wells Gray is a favorite spot for me to take people to go to. Um, at Paul Lake, if we just want to go somewhere closer by town. So I, I tend to focus on the uh, sort of outdoor, um, more sort of hiking experiences, I guess. I think uh, in response to this question, we need to be looking at other jurisdictions, other countries. There's a, um, in, particularly in developing countries, uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the developed world, um, I should say, there's a lot of great examples of people that are doing some really creative things. And, and we're, for example, tuition doesn't cost nearly what it's costing in Canada. Um, again, getting back to this idea uh, the, that we as Greens are putting forward for this election about, about really considering seriously a basic income project. Now that's that's developing in Ontario. The federal government's looking at that. Finland's looking at that and doing some really amazing work in that area. So I think that that uh, would be a real key consideration when we look at the cost of education and it's kind of creeping tuition costs for students, as well as just the cost of living. It's not just about tuition. It's also about what it costs us to just to live through um, your, your, your years of schooling and be able to afford rent and food and, um, and all the other costs. So how do we provide for that uh, so that we can really have uh, students well prepared for the future.